Brock for your hole, Brock for your show, Brock for your hole, Brock for your show, Brock for your hole, Brock for your hole, Bashim, your show, Bashim, God will dash. Double answer to the apostles and the elders of Great Mills, hold you well. Salutations to the hopeful elect out there. You are came to Sadakim that do this thing in the utmost truth and sincerity. I'm the priest Shema. Um, this week's topic is going to be a response to seven um, sayings in the world. The priest um, Shamar and the priest Yahweh did the lesson. Pretty much get into seven common sayings that you hear in the world that either disagree or agree with the scriptures. For the most part, they disagreed with the scriptures because um, a lot of those quotes people use to justify their wickedness, you know. And um, the one, you know, the brother said you could build upon it if you want. I don't know if they hit this point. But I know they had similar point, and one of the quotes I want to speak on is um, that's commonly said in the world is God hates the sin, not the sinner, right? And the cut on that is the book of um, Sirach, chapter 12, verse 6, where it says, The Most High hated sinners. That's how the scripture actually starts off, it's in the Apocrypha. And yes, the Apocrypha is a part of the Bible, 16, King James 16, 11, the version of of the Bible has the Apocrypha in it. John 10 and 22, Yahweh Shai kept the feast, the feast of dedication, which was established by Judas Maccabees, which we read about that in the Apocrypha. So, it's Rock 12 and 6, man, right? The most I hated sinners, right? And the world, you know, one of the things that the brothers touched on too is, you know, the world will say things like only God could judge and any type of shit to cover their wickedness and bullshit, you know what I'm saying? Anything but to repent, you know, these niggas will come up with a saying for it so that they could keep fucking sinning, man, all right? It's, it's a common thing for Jake to sin throughout their life, uh, sin throughout the week um, and go to church on Sunday and think they're forgiven, you know what I'm saying? Or dipping himself in some, some water which the act of baptizing yourself with water is not a sin. I'm not trying to play that, but what I'm trying to play is the fact that these jakes just do it in vain because they do it and sometimes become even more wicked, you know? They just think that washing themselves off is, you know, is going to purge them of their sins. You know, when King David said, wash me thoroughly, all right, King David wasn't talking about putting some water upon himself. In the Psalms, all right, putting some water upon himself and scrubbing himself. In the ancient world, when you would wash garments, to thoroughly wash a garment, you have to beat it against a rock. You soak it up a little bit, then you beat the shit out of it against a rock. And certain third world countries still do that today in the East, such as India. You know, that's something they still do today. They'll take the garment and slap it real fucking hard, man, and just keep slapping it. So that will give you a better visual of what King David is saying, wash me thoroughly, meaning put me through these afflictions. You know, Lord, really jack me up, like, in a sense, to help me, to help purge me. You know, if I sin, you know, let me feel it, you know, because I don't want to keep sinning and going off. It's a contrary in the world, man. The world only, see, if, if the if the most high is chastising um, an individual, they automatically feel like they're wicked. They, auto, they automatically associate that with a wicked person, you know? The Most High can chastise a wicked person justly, all right? And the Most High could chastise a just man to purge him of his bullshit, to make him a better individual. How is gold tried? Gold is tried through the fire, all right? That's written in the scriptures, right? And what's the fire represents? The fire represents trials and affliction of your daily life, man, all right? Shit that you go through. How should I said that? I'm not coming to baptize you with water, but to baptize you with fire. When you come in this thing, expect the fire. Expect the trials and tribulations. Zechariah 13, 8, 9 goes into two forms of fire that the the one-third will be tried with, all right? That will go through, all right? The, the first is, of course, the one I just mentioned, and the second is ultimately being delivered out of here out of nuclear hellfire, all right? That's going to be... It's going to happen with these nuclear missiles that no, uh, detonate, man. Now, things have been slowed down a little bit because Russia is trying to work things out with the United States and vice versa. And these nations, in terms of nuclear, um, trying to make a nuclear treaty. 
And, you know, it's not so much about peace, man, really. It's more about expensive, right? You know, to go to go, to go into an arms race is not cheap. And you know that when one nation come up with something new, the other nation has to come with uh, come up with something equal or greater. And that shit is not cheap. So Vladimir Putin, you know, in, a, in Russia's best interest, this guy is not trying to spend any more money, you know? But trust and believe, man, you don't need a whole bunch of nukes to end this man's rulership, man. They got enough to, they had enough nukes to end this shit in the 60s. But the Mosai operates on its own time, and it might seem like it's tarrying to the pursuant to the book of Habakkuk, the second chapter, but it has to come to pass, man. I mean, it has to, okay? These, these, no matter, Romans 3 and 3, for what is something that I believe, it doesn't matter if you believe in it or not. The Bible says it's going to happen. And Isaiah 14 and 24, Isaiah 55 and 11, when the Mosai speaks, it's going to come to pass. All right? Now, man can say this is not going to happen, and that's going to happen, and this. But the book of Lamentations, the third chapter, the 37th verse, says, Who is he that saith that cometh to pass that the Mosai commanded him not? All right? So you can't say, you can't speak um, upon the future unless the Mosai didn't command it. Now, so because somebody might say, see, Russia and the United States and all these nations are going to come to peace. Nah, man, when you think peace and sudden destruction, man, all right, ultimately these nations have to go to war against each other. So, you know, but going back to the topic, yeah, man, you can't just keep sinning and sinning and expect that, um, expect the most High to love you for it, man. Why would the most High love somebody that disobeys him, right? The scriptures tell you that rebellion is that, is that the sin as, of, of witchcraft. And furthermore, it is written, if you love me, keep my commandments, okay? To sin is not to keep the commandments. St. John, the third chapter and the fourth verse, sin is transgressing the law, all right? That's what sin is. Sin is not, um, you know, your own private interpretation. Like, there's so many different interpretations that the world has for sin. You know, I think uh, IFUBK says missing the mark or, you know, there's so many different inter interpretations, but the Bible answers itself, man. If you break the law, oh, Romans, all right, where there's no sin, there's no law, you know what I'm saying? So if you break the law, statutes, and commandments, you're a sinner. But if you love the Heavenly Father, you're going to keep him. So what's the opposite of that? Wouldn't the exact opposite be not keeping him? And the exact opposite of love would be hate. So if you do not keep the commandments of the Heavenly Father, then you don't love the Heavenly Father. So why in the hell would the Most High love somebody that hates Him? It's written in the book of Psalms 83 and 11 that the haters of the Lord should have submit themselves, man. So why the fuck would the Most High want haters? Part of my language, you know? But that is something that you're going to see in the world to justify their BS, to justify the, the, the adultery that they commit, the idolatry that they commit, the eating the pork, whatever they want to do, you know? And that's always been the, na the nature of of Israel. Now, if one is a sinner and he comes back to repentance and sincerity, as long as you do not blaspheme, your faith is in the hands of the Most High. As long as you do not blaspheme the Holy Spirit, all right, then any sin could be forgiven. And that's just, that, look, man, the Most High's mercy is just as great as his judgment and vice versa. That's in the book of Sirach, the 16th chapter. It tells you that his mercy is manifest unto all. Why do you think every single nation had a chance to put its own people in subjection? All 17 nations, at one point or another, had the children of Israel in subjection. Well, that satisfies the book of uh, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes, I want to say the 7th chapter and the 14th verse, all right? Where well, it speaks about um, um, affliction and poverty, uh, affliction and adversity. At one point or another, I mean, sorry, 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 prosperity and adversity. At one point or another, these nations had their moments of prosperity and their moments when they're not, and, and, uh, and their moments of adversity. Look at the Hamites today, the so-called Africans. You know, when you read the book of Genesis, man, those were the mighty Egyptians, man. They were very mighty, all right? They had a, you know, they had the longest, um, they had the longest ruling kingdom in history. You know, I think they didn't they didn't lose their kingdom to about the I believe you want to say the Greeks or the Romans, but they had the longest ruling in history. And now they ain't shit. Now you see them the one they, a lot of them don't even know that the, the true nationality of what they are, okay? But they've been abased. 
I mentioned the East Indians, man. Those are the Persians. Okay? They have been a base, man. Third world country. Well, one time they were popping, you know? They were up there. They had riches upon riches. But this is what the Most High does. Daniel's the fourth chapter, man. All right? Bring it up. He brings on, He brings up a person and bring them down to let you know that the Most High is the one that ultimately rules in the kingdom of men. You know? And wait a minute. Why did these nations lose their power? Because of sin. That's why kingdoms are translated. We're not going to sin. So our, our kingdom has... Well, it's not kept. The Howard Shai's kingdom, we being joint heirs, have no reason to be translated to any other nation because we won't sin. We'll be perfect, man. But until until we obtain that perfection, we have to strive for perfection. All right, we have to do our best to keep the law of session commandments. Now, are you going to keep them all? It's impossible, all right? The same creature that was made subject unto vanity was also made subject unto hope, all right? And as the apostle Peter said, all right, these flesh bodies are nothing but chains of darkness okay meaning they're prone to sin they're prone to go off you know that darkness you know that darkness is is, is, is um you know goes hand in hand with sin ephesians 2 and 1 tells us that man okay that we want we were once dead in our sins man so once we're in these bodies we're gonna sin we're gonna go off but the difference again between us and the rest of the nation of Israel, the two thirds, okay, of the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, is we are we, we're trying our best, man. And the Lord looks upon a sincere heart and has mercy upon it, man. But to a dude that don't give a fuck, especially dudes that willfully sin, you know what I'm saying? Willfully no right from uh I mean knowing right from one wrong and willfully doing wrong. I mean, people in the world even rap about it, how, how they demons and they sinning. These niggas rap about that shit nowadays, man. Demons with me, sinning. That's an actual lyric, man. So these dudes have been consumed in their sins, man. And we know that Satan runs this world, so they're getting all the goodies. You know, as long as they keep promoting, promoting Satan's agenda, Satan's, them demons are going to work with them. But guess what? Well, them demons are going to throw them in the, cash, in the fucking trash bin like a used tampon, man. And that's what Satan always does. <laughs> that's what Satan always does with these different artists, man. He used them, let them spread that demonic message, and throw them in a bin like a fucking used tampon, man. Put them in crazy amounts of debt. A lot of them end up killing themselves. A whole bunch of depression. They can't get any more hits. All right? They never regret all the rods that them blown and all the shit that sick shit they done done. All the success they did for success and all the seed they had to suck for suck to suck seed, right? So type of bomb little works weighs heavy on their mind. So they, they you know they end up walking around with shades on all the time or end up just killing themselves, man. You know? And that's what you get for trusting in this devil. I mean that's what you get for trusting in the spiritual demon Satan, man. You know? And then he guess what? He just gets another vessel. He gets another younger vessel. When you play that, he gets another younger vessel. Or he might just ride uh, um, with a person until they up in age and then decide to just do them dirty, you know? Satan's a cutthroat, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But really, Satan doesn't have anything, you know, power per se, man. He's not really uh, a mastermind of everything. A true mastermind is your how about shimmy out shot, man. That's a true mastermind. That's the... That's the that's the one that's really playing chess with everybody, man. The ultimate puppeteer. You know? And one might say, um, but didn't Satan talk with the Most High and made a bet with the Most High? And so, you know, didn't Satan try to mastermind something against Job? Listen, man. If you ever seen a ventriloquist, right? The people that, or the a ventriloquist, where they control the puppets to make the puppets talk, right? Sometimes they'll turn the puppet in their face and have the puppet talk to them. You know what I'm saying? So that's what the most I did with Satan, man. You know? You just, you know, like the, the, the venture, you know, the puppet talks and sometimes you turn it to yourself and have it talk to you. That's what the most I did, man. Okay? So he's the ultimate puppet master. He's the ultimate uh, one in control. And he's the one that judged these sinners out there, man. 
And, it, and a lot of times in the world, what, these, what people in the world do, when the Most High executes judgment, they try to justify these wicked ass people, man. Case in point, now there's gonna be nails on the chalkboard for a lot of people in the world. Kobe Bryant, man. Kobe Bryant died a horrific death, man. I mean, public execution. First Samuel's two and six tell you that the Most High is the one that killeth and maketh alive. So why did the Most High do him that dirty? Cause the dude was wicked, man. All right, the dude was he had sins either some secret or whatever. The Most High knoweth. All right, I can't go into detail of what Kobe did that pissed the Most High off. All right, as far as I as far as I can see, Kobe was a cool cat. He was a hardworking dude, man. He was a grinder. But the Most High um, thoughts are above our thoughts, man. So maybe Kobe must have did something in his past life to receive that horrific judgment. Or did something in secret, like trying to sell a soul, you know, whatever, man. The most I knows, man. And none perish being innocent. You know, so when that happened to Kobe Bryant, yeah, Kobe was cool. All of Israel was mourning for him and all that. And, you know, because he was a hard worker, at least in the public eyes. But the most I saw things differently, man. Took his daughter out, had the that limousine cop of swirling, burn him up, burn him alive. And crash the shit. So you know when they found the bodies, you know they didn't find everything intact. The head was probably here. The arm was probably there. In fact, they said it was burned so much that they couldn't even recognize who the hell the people was, man. Not alone, the th not 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 um not to forget that thick cloud. You know, that thick cloud suffocating you, man. It's just horrific. That's why the scripture says, "Known the terror of the Lord persuade men." You just recently got this dude pop smoke. And the most I smoked his ass, you know. You had another dude out there in Dallas, another rapper that wanted to live that gangster life while rapping. The most I had his 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 whole brain gets splattered, man. You know, because you pretty much reap what you sow. If you're gonna um, sow sin in the world, you're gonna reap you're gonna reap what sin um, gets you, man. Which is death. Romans six and twenty three. The wages of sin. Is death, man. Meaning the payment for sin is death. Why do people die today? Because we sin. Going back to Adam. So all these different celebrities, man, from Nipsey Hussle. Man, so many people have died. The most I didn't put a lot of judgment out there in the world, man. And that's, he does that daily. Okay? So to that comment... The most I um, hates the sin and loves the sinner. That is complete bullshit. That is not scriptural. There's another scripture that says you don't have a license to sin. All right? Nobody does. Nobody has a, okay, you have a license to break the most high's laws. You must be actually damn on. Even the thought of that's what the most I could judge you for. Then you know the most I judge somebody for picking up sticks on the Sabbath, man? So that shows you. Look, every sin. Um, you know, once you sin, the Mosai has a, a license to, to kill pretty much, right? But the Mosai could judge somebody differently, you know? The Mosai might let somebody slide on, on slipping up on the Sabbath, and, and the next person, the Mosai might judge him severely, man. So we don't want to play Russian roulette with the Mosai, you know? We don't want to gamble with the Mosai because the Mosai will body bag, body bag us, man. And that's the truth of the matter, you know? got to be like timid puppies, always in fear, man, never feeling comfortable, never, no, I don't care how much shows you do, how long you fast, never feel comfortable, man, never feel like, yeah, I'm in, until you in, when you in the chariots, then you can just, okay, I'm, damn, I'm the elect, you know, I'm good now, until then, man, always be on eggshells with the Heavenly Father, never, never takes a shoot for granted, all right, never stop teaching the Lord willing, most I put the spirit on you to never, um, you know, Go back in the world because that's the worst thing you could do, man. All right, that's the worst thing you could do. Go back in the world and start teaching madness. Because when you end this thing, pursuant to the book of Psalms 34 and 7, you have a hedge about you. All right, the angels of the Lord encamp around those that fear him. Once you off this truth, that hedge is gone, man. Them angels ain't why, why would them angels protect you? Now you could be susceptible to all types of demons, man. You know. With that, 
give all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, the blinds of the apostles, the elders of Great Millstone, Jewel. Salutations to the whole for the elect out there. Shalom.